Wednesday. And as promised, in studio from How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World, star of that film, Jay Barishal. How are you, man? Woo! I'm very well, Woo! thank you. How are you? I'm good. It's a pleasure to have Thanks. you in studio. Thank you for having me. You know, what's funny is we almost had you in studio for, we'll talk about it in a little bit, with Goon 2. Oh, yeah. Directing it. We, yeah. we, we do a trivia show here. Of course, we talked yeah. about it too, but, but uh, to finally get you in here now. Very happy to be here. Yeah, to talk about this movie, and right before we went on air, I dropped my daughter off at school. Yeah. She's seven years old, and I said, uh, I said, you know, I'm going to get a chance to talk to, uh, to Hiccup. Okay. And she's like, what? <laughs> and she's like, you, you have to you have to tell him that I said hi. I was like, no, no, no. I, was like I was like, I will. I was like, but uh, I say hi back. Kid, kid, kids love this movie. I love this movie. Oh, Everybody glad. in here loves this movie. Yeah. The first, that's awesome. The first and second movie um, to me, and we had this discussion right before you got in. The second movie was so layered. Yeah. To me, and there's like a lot of things that happened. And I love the first one, but the second one to me is my favorite. Yeah, right. It's a special flick. We have a bet going on. I was going to ask you this question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not including the new one that comes out. Yeah. Out of the oh, hey, come yeah. on. Are you kidding me? No. Nope, nope. That, that the completely bet's changes over. the Let bet. Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> out of the first two, which one did you respond to the most out of the two? Oh, of the n number one and two? Correct. Uh, yeah, probably the second one. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how awesome you are that you just did that? Yeah. Because I thought you would have an answer, and I thought it would be the third one. He took the third one out of the running. Yes. It obviously would be the third one. Right. Uh, Go see the movie. Korea. Well, yeah, not just that. Um, I mean, I am here for a re unofficial business. Uh, um, so, yeah, don't bother going to spend money to see a new movie when you can watch the old one for free. Uh, uh, I have no skin in this game whatsoever. <laughs> um, no, I, mercifully, it's it's uh, it's not crap though. When I say that, I, I I legitimately think this one is the best one. But um, yeah, they're all they're all special. They're really they're really good movies, and they agreed. And, and especially when you do look, a lot of times you can put together franchises because they just make money. Yeah, right. But when you're part of something yeah. that is it's special, and you know it's special. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a different thing, especially because we always knew that. Even on the first one, we were working backwards from this ending. We yeah. we knew that back in 07 or 08. Yeah, I, I did my first recording session in 07. A uh, different director is a whole different take on the movie. That as a, as a the original iteration of How to Train Your Dragon was not remotely similar to what came out in the what world. What was the difference? Wow. Um, it was way sort of uh, cartoonier, uh, a bit more... Um, uh, goofy? Yeah, a bit goofier. Yeah. Uh, the characterizations were everything from the artwork to, to how we were told to play them was much closer to kind of... If you've seen what he look, Hiccup looks like in the books. Yeah. Um, just a bit sort of, yeah, a bit more fun, goofy. And um, and when uh, Dean uh, DeBlois and Chris uh, Sanders came in... Their big instinct was no. This has to be uh, Star Wars or Dune or Tolkien. Uh, it has to have a weight to it, and it has to ha it has to have shadows, and it has to be about stuff, and there has to be loss, and there has to and you know we have to understand the cost of things, and they just it, much everything that everyone loves about How to Train Your Br Dragon was brought to the franchise by via Dean and Chris. Wow. Um, and uh, and and for me, it was literally just like. I went to an audition and w and went like, eh, you know, and <laughs> in 07, and now here we are, and it's like this epic global phenomenon. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's crazy to hear that, too, because if they had gone down that path, that cool lighting technique that I was telling you guys about probably wouldn't no. be a thing, where all of a sudden you've got, like, photo reel uh, yeah. water and fire uh, and stuff. Like, uh, uh, ray tracing. Yeah. They, 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 the, the technology has increased exponentially between each film and I think each film necessitates the creation of new technology right it's a mother of invention and so you know now I feel I have no place speaking to that because I, I literally just do what I'm doing here uh, I just talk into a microphone six times a year for three years and then a movie comes out and everyone's like oh my god what's it like and and there's like I hate using terms like unsung heroes but like if the movies are special, it's because of the army of people at DreamWorks Animation who have toiled ceaselessly to bring this to life. And um, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 I just get to go out and, and get all the applause for it. Yeah. That was one of my questions for Dean the other day at yeah. the junket was who is the unsung hero of this franchise? And it's a question that I put in my back pocket for all animation junkets because yeah. nobody ever talks about the thousands of names yes. that you see at the very end of the movie. Correct, and 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 it's also a, it's an international project as well. They have animators in Argentina and all over the place, and and um, yeah. It, it it doesn't just take a village, you know. It, it's it takes more than that, and um, yeah, it's 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 a hell of a thing to be part of the um, yeah the the gold standard yeah. in animation. You know, did you do the TV show also? I did. You yeah. did, right? Yeah. So, yes, my again, my daughter. I, I I knew of the TV show because I I, I believe, I, like I said, I heard your voice, yeah, you and, I, and I'm watching. Now, only one person sounds as, as god awful. <laughs> so oh, oh stop it! <laughs> but 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 that show, but this, because of the show and then the yeah. movies. But the question, because sometimes when actors do, whether it's some voice voice work, they don't always go to the junkets out, or excuse me, the the premieres outside mm-hmm. of the country right. and the travel. Are you doing all those? Yeah, well, too? I've got it. I've gone everywhere they've told me to go. I, awesome. we, I was there when we premiered number two at Cannes, which was like a pretty cool thing um, to stand on the top of that, you know, world famous stairway at the end of the movie. And, uh, you know, I turned to Dean and I said, not not bad for two boys from Quebec. Eh? You yeah. know, as is pretty cool because like hey, he's from Elmer, Quebec, small town near Ottawa. He's a Sheraton grad. He, um and and it's just kind of neat for us to have that and and so yeah I've gotten to to see the world and 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 to to bring it places and and it's it's just like you can work your entire career and never be part of something that's like one tenth as impactful as yeah. any of these movies, let alone all of them. Do you think it's the most impactful film you've ever done or a franchise? Oh, uh, uh, unquestionably. You know, there, there's there's ones that I like just as much. You know, but um, nothing I've been a part of has touched the globe like this has. You know, and and also the 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 kind of fandom that that this particular. Uh, saga has is so uh, avowed and sincere and it's like cause, and, I, and I suspect that comes from well, if you think back to when you were a kid how what your favorite stuff was when you were a kid um, nothing in your adult life matches that there, there's nothing you like as a grown up as purely and all consumingly as you did when you were little right and so I get to be a part of that for a whole bunch of you know and, and now the movies have been around for a decade so yeah. there are teenagers getting ready to go to university to watch in this one who were little kids when the first one came out and that's like I don't have the words to describe what that feels like yeah. it's really really cool well that's the beauty of, of the trilogy that especially from hearing you say before that you guys knew kind of the ending that you were yeah. leading up to yeah. in this film and that's kind of be such so rewarding in general because that when the second one comes out and yeah. it's as successful as it was and gets all the accolades that it yeah. does do you know at that point well I can't wait to the third <laughs> yeah but I also I, I always yeah 100% yeah. but I, I take nothing for granted and I don't know if that's just like me having grown up poor and Canadian but I, I just assume I, I, I never never count my chickens and, and a lot of things happen there's no accounting for taste right and so there's plenty of things that I thought were amazing that I was a part of that the world didn't agree with me yeah. so so you know so I, I, I take nothing for granted but I always knew that best case scenario we'd land where we landed yeah Riley did you have oh god I, I don't even know where to start hey, Ry- so Riley let's just give you a background Riley yeah. is a Hardcore die die hard fan of the franchise. Oh, amazing! Like the yeah. franchise. You the... should have worn your shirt today. That's one oh, of my favorite yes. shirts. So I have a Batman shirt, but it's toothless. Oh, that's pretty cool. In the, yeah. in the thing, I should have. But I, yeah. Um, but it, you the... said you just dressed like a nice gentleman. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, he's and gonna, I he's did. Gonna, he's going to teach a class up. at the end of this. Um, <laughs> but it's the <laughs> it's the first movie that really got me, and I'm an adult, and I was really sparking to you, like when you talk about like how it touches kids. Yeah. You have no idea how important the first movie is to me because of like the what it meant at the time when I saw it. Yeah. I just revisited it because I'm not going to try to be sad here. I lost my dog. Yeah, right. This movie was so helpful. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> it just like it brought oh, a smile awesome. to my 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 face and when my fiance and I were watching it yeah. I'm like I feel better now. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I think that's that I'm very happy to hear that and and that's not an uncommon reaction. Yeah. I think a lot of there's a lot of projecting of people's most beloved pets onto, oh, yeah. onto, onto Toothless and all the dragons, you know. And so I think that's another thing that makes it rise above the din is is um, anybody anybody with a good heart cares for animals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good – so my fiancé and I were watching this, and we, we, of course, love Toothless, but we're like, there's some dog – 
things. Yeah. There's some cat yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. that was that like completely on purpose? Yeah, or? I think uh, I so and everybody is convinced their pet is the one that Toothless was based <laughs> right. on. Right. Uh, whether that makes sense or not. Um, there's people like, I, I know you based Toothless on my last app, so I was like, well, nobody knows that dog exists. So, <laughs> so that's probably not true, but I, I'm glad. I, that's how you're supposed to feel. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, I, uh, Dean says Toothless is equal parts uh, dog and cat. That's what I see. In terms of behavior, yeah. yeah. Well, here's another thing that you guys share love to, at least uh, Riley and Perry, is that you're a big horror yeah, oh, yeah, big yeah. horror guy, big because time. and that leads into your the movie you directed uh, yeah. too. Because we directed your first one was Goon Two. Yes, it was. Which, by the way, from the first mo- that that movie, the first movie when it came out, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, from that right. I, because that was one of those movies. I don't know if it's just gonna be a slapstick comedy. Yeah, right. But very similar to what you were talking about with the with how the first How to Train Your Dragon shifted. Yeah. It shifted my expectations of that movie when I found it. It had heart. Awesome. And, and then the second one just carried that over. Thank and you, you. And you did the same thing with that. Thank you. But let's talk about. But you have your random acts of violence movie yeah. that you directed. Tell me your love of horror, how it led for you to do this this second movie. Yeah, um, I, uh, thanks for asking. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I I suspect uh, I, I have always had a kind of a pure love of horror and scary stuff. Just and I don't know quite that I can put my finger on when it started, but I always knew that like. In my house, the second biggest day of the year was always Halloween. It was Christmas and Halloween. Those look at the smile on Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all from my mother. Yeah. And um, and and I had very cool parents who educated me on cinema and would like always do a 101 uh, before whatever movie they show. So when they would show me like Road Warrior before they play it, mom would explain to me why this is special, what it means to her, why this is better than other movies, all right. these different things. And so I was... What a cool mom. Very, <laughs> very, very. Yeah. Um, and I grew, and and she was like such a hard SF fan. Like all she read was uh, Silverberg and Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. That's like, you know... Um, uh, and so I I was versed in this, in this stuff. And then in high school is when I really full on blossomed into all of it. Um, I, I was reading Tom Savini books and and I had Fangoria every issue in my knapsack that year, um, throughout all of high school I should say. And I and I think that I've tried to ask myself why because it's like my two great loves in movies are horror and action movies. And I and I think it's the same reason I like heavy music, which is that it's pure and direct. It bypasses your intellect and goes right to your heart, and it gets no love from critics. <laughs> and and the fans are incredibly religious, right? Like I'll I'll put a Slayer fan up against a Maroon Five fan any day, right? Like, <laughs> sorry, Cody, you're gonna have to leave. <laughs> and, and I think horror and action is the same kind of thing. And so, random acts of violence. Um, we, we've Jesse, my writing partner, and I have been trying. Uh, we've been trying for seven years to get this movie wow. made. Seven years ago, we wrote the first draft of the first treatment. Um, so we had gone through. God knows how many drafts of that script before Goon 2 was like... We, so we were developing this way before Goon 2. Right. Uh, we always wanted to continue Goon, but this was the thing. Um, and so we finally got to make it uh, last summer um, back home in Ontario. Uh, Jordana Brewster and... Oh, uh, I know and, Jordana. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jesse Williams uh, from Grey's Anatomy. Oh, I love yeah. him. Yeah, uh, a lot of women do. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's a very ugly cast I have. Um, I, I'm there to cut the edge off, to take the edge off it, I I guess um, and uh, um, yeah, photographed by Kareem Hussein, uh, a really amazing cinematographer who shot uh, Hobo with a Shotgun, in addition to a whole bunch of other amazing movies. And um, yeah, we shot it in 20 days this summer, and um, yeah, uh, it's harsh as fuck. Yeah, that's what, great. Uh, great. Yeah, what yeah. subgenre of horror would you put it in? Because now I'm picturing like a little bit of a Hobo with a Shotgun flare, and so that kind of excites me. It my... definitely that color palette is uh, evident in parts of our movie. Um, I see. It's tricky how I describe it uh, to people I trust, and how I describe it to my producers are two different things. So, uh, uh, no, it is. Um, it is uh, the the. Uh, I hate using terms like this, but I guess elevated horror. So it's basically it's about this dude that writes um, very graphically violent uh, horror comic book. Uh, who's trying to come up with an ending? He wants to end the book, um, and he's dri- We're driving down from Toronto to uh, New York for Comic Con, and we have a few signings and stuff to do on the way. And on our journey, we start seeing people getting killed um, in ve- in a fashion very similar to the way his killer kills people in the comics. So it's apparent that there's some crazy person kind of riffing with us, um, and we set ourselves some pretty lofty goals, which is to sort of 
take the piss out of torture porn, uh, take the piss out of devaluing female life. And, um, you know, we, we, we our, our, our whole film is built on a kind of question, which is how come we can all name Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy and Jack the Ripper, uh, but most people can't name the people they killed? And how come we can all name Jason and Freddy but can't name the horny kids that they kill in those movies, right? So, you, you know, Friday the 13th doesn't have a – these movies don't have leads. The killers are the leads, right. really. So if that if you agree that the killers are the leads, then what you're experiencing as a fan is vicarious sadism. And I think that that's kind of fucked. And so we approached our gore, especially coming off of Goon 2, which was very sort of deliberately operatic and over the top and peck and paw – we tried to make our violence incredibly uh, clumsy and weird and offbeat and painful and awkward. I, I don't want anybody watching my movie and when someone gets killed, high five the guy next to him, go, holy fuck, that's crazy, mm-hmm. man. Because that shit, as, as entertaining as it can be, um, even if you don't agree with my bleeding heart stuff, it's just not scary. And I think that a horror film, if it fails to scare you or make you uncomfortable, it hasn't done its really sole job. And so to me, scary is um, scary is clumsy and weird and unconventional. And so we have far less blood in this movie, but the violence is way harsher. Way, way, way harsher. Scary in the moment, but also scary that you take home with you. Like you're ideally, stuck with this idea in brain. Ideally, like there's a moment in this movie. Uh, it's the first time I've told anybody because it's like a, mov- a, mo- a moment that keeps that really kills people really like it but um, we have a killer who you get to see do something you don't really see a killer do in these movies which is um, psych himself up to kill a bunch of people oh. so you see him sort of beating his nerves and I said you know just play it like you're going out to play a shift of hockey and everyone's watching and so he's second guessing himself and start stopping and then he has to mash his head and starts hitting the hood of his car and he fucking has to get his energy going and then he goes in and just goes to town on them and it's this sort of weird real moment that sets up the violence to come and the kind of cumulative effect of all of it is uh, hopefully very disquieting. What you described as kind of fucked is actually in almost every major horror movie from Friday the 13th to Halloween. Does that mean that you're not a fan of those films? No, it, it, I, I, I enjoy them, and, and I, I enjoy some. I, 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 there's not many Jasons that I like. Uh, I like more of the... There's, there's, there's Freddy's I like more than I like Jasons. Did you like the Halloween like? remake? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's really good. Um, I don't love that it's like... I don't like its apology for um, gun nut culture, yeah. um, which it ended up kind of being. Uh, so that that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It, it, and I don't know that they intended to do that. It's the way that you interpreted it. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. it ends up having politics in it, whether you want to or not. Everything does. And um, so I, I always, like, for me, it's uh, Cronenberg and Clive Barker. Um, and, and, and nobody can accuse any of those movies uh, of being irresponsible, I don't think. Well, you know, the thing is, hearing you talk about this, obviously, I mean, the amount of passion just came out of of that speech right there, too. You can feel it, and it makes... I'm not the biggest horror guy, but I'm very interested in seeing your film from from just the description of it, but I also... I did. I like the last Halloween, um, and I and I like what James Wan does and yeah. I, with the Conjuring. I like movies when they uh, when they they make me think, or I have it's just the new spin. Yeah, completely. it's just not the same shit over and over again. Hundred percent. But the question I have for you though too is because you're obviously very passionate about acting. Um, but with Goon Two and now with this film, directing also seems to be something that you've wanted to do for a very long time, and now you're in the thick of it. Yeah, luckily. What, you got you. I'm giving you can only. Choose one. Yeah, uh, You're only allowed to oh, do acting for the rest of your life yeah. or directing? Oh, directing. What do you take? Directing. directing. You're done. I, 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 have, I was nine years old when I said to my parents, um, I want to write and direct horror movies and action movies when I grow up. Uh, my first day on set as an actor, I was 12. And so that was three years after that. And when I started at 12, mom said to me, you want to go to film school. I think you being on set is probably the best film school in the world. And so, and, and, and please don't infer anything less than pride and gratitude in the career I've had. Because I, I am, less than 20% of actors can feed themselves through acting. And I've been able to do it since I'm 12. So I, I am very, very proud. And I've got to do awesome stuff. However, it was never my raison d'etre. Like, always, 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 it was... I was in acting to be a part of movies, not the other way around. Right. Um, and so uh, something I'm really happy about is like 
I'm getting to actually do this stuff. Now, I after Goon 2, I never I don't assume I'll ever make a movie again. I want to. I have a whole bunch of movies I want to make, but every movie's a miracle. Right. And they're very hard to make. It's a prohibitively expensive art form, right? The when when the lowest, cheapest, shittiest just four people in a room thing costs a million dollars of somebody's money. Right. It's it's more expensive than a record. It's more expensive than a painting. You know, the, the cost of production is just prohibitive. So I take nothing for granted. But if I'm able to keep making movies, I'll make them so long as someone will, allows me to. As, as a massive action fan, yeah. who do you want to direct? Which action star do you want to direct the most? Oh, God. That's a that's a really cool one. Um, that's a great question. Well, uh, I'd have to say... Um, G- growing up, the 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 biggies for me were obviously uh, Schwarzenegger, uh, Van Damme, and God help me, I, I'm not he's not my answer. But I have to say, I was a fan of Steven Seagal when I was a kid before he became a Serbian citizen and lost his mind <laughs> yeah. and started well, that's what, yeah. wearing fucking shooting range glasses, <laughs> and Soviet style yeah. military parades, but, uh, um, and just looking like Dracula all the time. But uh, uh, um, <laughs> But really, um, my my single favorite performance in any movie is Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday in Tombstone. Oh, yeah. So oh, that that, that, that would be it for me. It's Val Kilmer. We had well, we talked we've been talking about it at length here for, with uh, with Van Damme. We had him in yeah, last that's week. That's so cool. Cody, go ahead and play. You want some cookies? I said yeah. You want a glass of milk? I said yeah. He was telling the story about Bloodsport. <laughs> On the picture right behind yes, right you. Behind yeah. me. He was telling the story about Bloodsport, and he said he told the story about the guy that gave him the road, and he said, Van Damme, you would not be a star. And you want cookies? I said, yes. You want milk? I said, yes. And he told this whole story about how he got it. You have but, a green card? But, yeah, I, he's, I said, of course I do. I did not have my green card. Uh, but, but, he's, but he's just so intense. Yeah, and he's no just, but he's one of those things. It was amazing to see. But I, I, you, you hear of all these things. But the one thing that you said throughout this whole thing, a couple things I picked up was your mom. Yeah. Where did your mom's love of film come from? And like just going out and seeing movies as a kid, and then to just kind of teaching you that? Like, yeah, wh- uh, I think it came from. Um, so she was uh, six of eight kids in a big kind of Irish Catholic family. Um, grew up in a army base because my granddad was a soldier, um, and uh, it, it's a uh, that her, she grew up in a world of of pure necessity, basically, and. Um, she was this kind of uh, unattended to little bright light in her family who adored Star Trek and adored all these things, and she was always told that stuff silly. Yeah. Um, and then she moved out of the house at 17, and, um, and that didn't dim her interest in horror and science fiction. It's just like she now didn't have anyone to give her shit. Right. And so I suspect that when... I, and I, I don't suspect, I know, because like when I was growing up, she would tell me... Um, nobody told me that I could do this. Nobody encouraged me. I had these ideas, and everyone told me this was silly. And uh, what's a girl writing about spaceships in 1960 going to do with, right. for a living? You know. So as a result, mom really kind of encouraged me always. You know, we were poor, but she said, you know, no matter what, we're um, never too poor for books. So you'll always have books. I read at a very very early age, um, and then and then my father. Uh, also a very, very gifted, talented writer who never got to do anything with it because he, um, yeah, I'll be perfectly frank, yeah, he, he uh, before I was born, he was, uh, he was a drug dealer and then he went to prison and then, uh, and then he started just selling uh, microchips is what he did when I was a kid, was just selling microchips, um, but he could sell anything to anybody um, and, uh, and a great lover of books and movies. And so every Friday and Saturday, Dad would rent at least two movies. The next morning, I'd wake up. And if the tape was in the machine, it meant I was allowed to watch it. Awesome. Because it was usually rewound, waiting for me. If it was back in this case, it meant it was like, you know, Wild Orchid or something that I wasn't supposed (laughs) to see. Not yet, kids. But what this meant was um, every weekend for most of my childhood, I watched a minimum of two to four movies all the time. And, And my dad, to his credit... He wanted nothing more than for me to like live his life. The the sans the drug dealing, but he wanted me to like play hockey and just do everything he did, and that just wasn't going to happen. To his credit, though, when he saw that I had an interest, 
he supported it in a big way. He just wanted me to care about something. Isn't that the most important thing? Yes. Because you, because you have two parents here to, to to support you who basically fed you yeah. movies. Yeah, correct. And, you, and w- you, you would probably say, correct me if I'm wrong, that they are responsible for what you're doing My right dad now? bought me my first movie, right. and I have been collecting movies since that day. What was I the movie? Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off on oh, VHS. Right? And That's and it's amazing. It's still number, yeah, yeah. number one for me. Um, that started so when I was a kid, everyone else was collecting like hockey cards. I did that a little, but really I collected movies. And my parents bought me books on movies. So, uh, you know, you get those compendium of, of Roger Ebert reviews. So I just like read that cover to cover when I was nine, having never seen any of these films, right? right. Or even stuff just like, remember at video stores, they used to have those like once a year kind of catalogs to guides to what's out there. So dad would just give the guy 20 bucks at the video store to get that. And it there's no crit- critiques. It's literally just synopsis, it's just pages and pages of synopsis. I would just commit them all to memory. So I'd commit all these stories and all these uh, directors, and I just, wow. like, that was my life, right? Well, listen, there's a couple things that I'm thinking, and I know the fans are, are know it. Yes, I absolutely am thinking, why hasn't Jay Barishal played Sam Levine in a movie, Trudy Schmona? I'm absolutely <laughs> thinking that. Um, but, yes. I, guys, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. The movie is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, and it comes out on February 22nd. Second, mm-hmm. um, thank you. I cannot wait. I know that everybody else here is Perry. You've been had, been looking to see it already. <laughs> I love this franchise. Yeah, that goes so, without saying. Yeah. <laughs> so very happy to hear that. Uh, yeah, please come back and see us. Thank you. Especially you. when your movie when when it hits. Done. We, we want to see yeah. it. Done and Jay Barish, you're on Twitter, right? I am indeed. All right, so Not on Instagram though. I am. Now you are. Uh, I just made a, a, a purposely inconvenient uh, name as possible because. Um, is like, so I, I have a real love-hate thing with social media, as I'm sure most people do. So I, I made my full fucking birth certificate name. So Jonathan Adam Saunders Baruchel <laughs> at, <laughs> at, 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 that's me on Instagram. Amazing. <laughs>